J.P. Morgan Chase will lead the largest U.S. banks in reporting full-year earnings and compensation costs for employees. The latter is a controversial figure that will be closely watched. Wall Street traders still earn a lot more than brain surgeons and U.S. generals, but is that fair? It helps sort it out as someone who recruits top talent for trading firms. George Stein, Managing Director at Commodity Talent LLC. George, welcome to Bloomberg. Good to have you here. Good to be here. Uh, one thing that came to mind when I was reading the story and doing some of the research. This is something that former Labor Secretary Robert Reich has lamented. He's been doing so for the past couple of years. He's talking about this pay disparity, that if we want to really address one of the economic problems in this country, we have to address the pay gap between the haves and have-nots. Is that being addressed? The short answer is no. It's being addressed on the margins, but among my clients on Wall Street and among hedge funds, they're still willing to pay top dollar for top talent, and right now there's a tremendous amount of activity as the bonus season approaches. And even in this economic climate, there's an understanding that if you don't get us, somebody else will. It's almost like the, the Yankees always want somebody that the Red Sox are interested in. It's, I hate to make a sports analogy, but is it something like that? It is exactly like that. Uh, the, if you will not be paid for what you can accomplish at a bank, there are plenty of hedge funds that would like your talent. Does a trader really have a lot more stress than a brain surgeon? It's not a question of stress. It's a question of how your economic utility. If you want a brain surgeon, how much do you want to pay for health costs? for health care. The other issue is that for all their skill and all their science and all their knowledge, a brain surgeon operates on one brain at a time. An oil trader routinely will trade a cargo of a million barrels. But one of the things that we did notice during the economic downturn, there was kind of a, if you will, a storm the Bastille mentality because a lot of people were upset saying there is a disconnect between Wall Street and between Main Street. A lot of people were concerned about the bailouts of the auto industry, for example. And then they say, when does that, sort to, when does that start to trickle down to us? Main Street still feels like they're getting the short end of the stick here. Well, as a recruiter, my job is to find the best talent for my clients. But as a citizen, it's a question of economic policy. You can tax high income if you wish. Mm -hmm. Usually at this point, higher taxes are a non-starter in, in today's politics. You could direct particular, um, particular groups to get better taxes than others. You could pay brain surgeons a million dollars if you want to pay the health care costs at that level. You could pay four-star generals that if you want the Pentagon budget to quadruple. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what the financial crisis taught us about Wall Street, any, uh, Wall Street compensation. Did it teach us anything? Yes, it did. Uh, people are putting into place uh, measures that will restrict risk-taking. And they're doing that in a number of different ways. In particular, they are reducing the amount of uh, corporate capital that is used to take directional bets on the price of oil, for example. They are also uh, reducing the limits of individual traders. They're also instituting clawback provisions for comp in case trades don't work out down the road. And George, we're looking at a graphic on screen there. If we could put that back up, it was about 17% of Americans saying that they favor, what was it, 50% uh, tax on bonuses greater than $400,000 a year. Well, that leads to what I was saying. You have the ability through the tax policy to control exorbitant pay, and that has been done in the past. The current tax rates are quite low historically, but raising taxes, as our most recent elections shown, is something that a lot of people steer clear of. How's Wall Street pay structured right now? Typically, it's structured. You get a base. If you're at a director level, it would be around 200, 250,000. And depending on how you do, you can get zero, in which case you're usually shown the door, or you could get a multiple of that. And typically, if you're a trader, you get a percent of your profit and loss, typically on Wall Street between 8 and 12 percent, so that someone who is making around 10 to 15 million can expect a paycheck of over $1 million. Are we starting to see Wall Street firms hiring again? The hiring is definitely going on. There's a lot of turmoil. This is the season when people get their bonus numbers. It's a typical season when people are very anxious and nervous and they start feeling, making, extending feelers elsewhere. It is also the case this year because of all the new regulations that anxiety is more heightened than I have ever seen it. And George, in our last 30 seconds, that would lead me to believe that the competition is fierce out there for jobs. What gives someone a competitive edge? If they can make money. It's that simple. Wow. <laughs> George Stein, joining us, Managing Director, Commodity Talent. George, thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Always good to talk to you. Thank you.